Hey guys! So I have a video I'm really excited to share with you guys today. Um, I have been working on it for a very long time now. I'm kind of embarrassed to say how long. Um, it's kind of a mixture of it took a while and then excuses, 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 and yeah. I have been testing out dry shampoo for a very long time now. I've been using dry shampoo for a very, very, very long time. I don't even know. Um, it was one of those things as soon as I heard about it I was like yes I need that right now um, and it was a life changer because I do have oily hair and I do get I don't know my hair texture is kind of weird it's a, a strange mix between fine and um, medium so yeah anyways dry shampoo has changed my life so I really wanted to share what I have been testing for the last couple of years with you guys so that maybe you could pick your favorite dry shampoo. If you like this type of video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Um, these types of videos take a lot of work. These sort of compiling lots and lots of information. I, I was looking through different price points and I was looking at different you know, aspects of dry shampoo. So it was a lot of information I had to compile. And so if you like these types of videos, let me know by liking, commenting, and subscribing. <laughs> So one of the things that I wanted to mention is that I have been working on this for a little while so there might be something that I say or packaging or something that might be a little outdated for example like price point if I give a price point um, you know and it's a little bit off it's just because this information you know I've been working on gathering it for a while now so you know some of the things have changed I don't think that there's anything in here that would have changed that would alter my opinion in any way drastically so I felt comfortable just kind of leaving things how it was and not having to go recheck everything again because that took a really long time. Alright so getting ready to start this video and tell you about dry shampoos. Um, what I do have some notes here so I'm gonna read to you what I think is important when I'm testing out a dry shampoo. What are the things that I look for? The first thing I look for, I want to know, is it leave a white cast and is it like impossible to blend out? That's really like important to me. I don't want to walk around with like random gray patches in my hair. Um, not that I probably haven't before, but yeah. Also, does it remove the oily feeling from my hair? Um, you know, not only do I want it to look clean, but I also want it to feel kind of clean. So I don't want it to feel like heavy and greasy. Can I restyle my hair afterwards? There's a couple in here that I'll talk about and like they make my hair feel okay but then they change the way I'm able to style my hair and that doesn't really work for me so I don't want that. Um, are there any uncomfortable textures or residues? That really bothers me. That's something that bothers me I think maybe differently than other people. I think this is going to be something that either bothers you or it doesn't and it really bothers me. Price point is important, however, if I do like something, I will do my best to like find the best prices on it and just purchase the thing that I like as opposed to just buying something because it's cheap. Um, also, is the brand socially conscious or trying to meet a need? Is it vegan? Is it cruelty free? Is it gluten free? I do my best to identify these brands, however, anybody who's ever went through like trying to go cruelty free or trying to go vegan the information can be very confusing and misleading so I do try to pay attention and kind of put it all in the basket however I might get it wrong so feel free to nicely tell me if I get something wrong or forget to mention something that you think is important another thing that's really important to me is I need it to last at least eight hours um, my days go, I get up in the morning, I go to work, I have an office job, so I'm at work really more than eight hours. It's usually more like 12 hours is my day or more. Um, however, I really need it to last at least for the first part of the day. Like, I want to get past lunchtime and be like, okay, my hair still looks all right. Um, does it have a really strong scent? This is something that doesn't necessarily bother me all that much, but sometimes it does, depending on whether or not I personally like the scent. Um, but I know this is a thing for other people, so I try to pay attention to it when I'm talking about products. 
And the other thing is, does it leave my hair limp at the end of the day? Um, or at any point in the day, I should say. So this is something I'll talk about a little bit more when I actually start reviewing the dry shampoos. So if you're ready to see some dry shampoos, I'm ready to show you some. I ranked all of the dry shampoos that I have, though that I tried, I ranked them all based on these factors. And I bring them from uh, worst to the best. So we're gonna start with the worst one. And actually, I, I'm looking over here because this is where they're all laying. Um, I actually have misplaced the packaging for it somewhere. So I'm just going to go ahead and tell you it was the Alterna Bamboo Style Extend, I think is the name of it. And that one actually ranked 9th out of 15th for the most expensive. So it was a kind of expensive one. And what I found with it is that it didn't remove oil very well. It came out clear, but it leaves a tacky texture on my hair. And, um... One of the funny things is it reminds me of Pretty Pistol because it smells like coconut lime verbena. So I know that's one of her favorite scents. Um, I've heard her talk about it so many times and I'm like, hmm, this dry shampoo smells like that, but it's terrible dry shampoo, so I won't recommend it for you. So anyways, that was my least favorite of all of them. And a lot of that had to do with just, it was expensive. Um, so it was expensive and didn't really do anything. So those, the more expensive ones are gonna obviously rank lower especially if they don't do anything. Here's one that a lot of people I feel like are gonna disagree with me about, and that is the Living Proof Full Dry Volume Blast and the Living Proof Perfect Hair Day. Mm -mm, I don't like these. I finished, I managed to finish the Perfect Hair Day bottle and I didn't even, like this one's almost pretty still, this one's actually like, has quite a bit in there. I had a really hard time figuring out why I didn't like these. The, it does, it made my hair feel so clean. Like I would spray this in and my hair just felt amazing and clean and I was like, yes, this is gonna be great. But then a couple hours into the day, I was just like, my hair looks awful today and I can't figure out like why I'm not really enjoying it. And so finally, after like using it and using it, I figured it out and it's just that there's something in this product that I don't think is in a lot of other dry shampoos that makes my hair look go limp. Um, and I found this across the Living Proof brand um, very consistently. I think it might be their patented signature pro um, ingredient. Maybe it's in here, I'm not sure. However, something in here makes my hair just go limp and like unruly I don't know it just looks stuck to my head it doesn't look greasy per se like it doesn't look shiny and yucky but it looks flat and limp which kind of comes across as greasy especially if your hair is dark I don't know that this is actually gonna be a problem for people with different hair texture than myself um, but it really is a problem for me and if it's a problem for me it's gonna be a problem for at least one other person another problem that I had with this is that it was really really expensive and I didn't like the way my hair look out of all of the products this was the 11th of the most expensive so I would really recommend that if you have maybe a finer hair texture um, maybe get a sample size of it first because it is expensive and yeah I'd hate for you to waste your money <clears throat> Another product that was really expensive and didn't do jack. Um, this one is the Elizabeth and James Nirvana Bourbon. I got this in a gift set with the perfume. I love the perfume and I was so excited to get this. I was like, okay, you know what? I love this fragrance. So at the least, I can spray this in my hair and use it as sort of a hair perfume. Well, not only was it a terrible dry shampoo, but like the scent didn't even really last in my hair. So I was really confused. It was really expensive. I would just tell you to avoid this. Sorry, it's disappointing for me because I really wanted to like this. Okay, these next two um, ranked a little bit higher than the last two, but that's just because they're cheaper. Um, this is the Dove Refresh Plus Care Volume Full Moisturize Shampoo and the Herbal Essence Bio Renew. This one actually was sent to me from Influencer and there is a ton of product left in here. Um, these get ranked a little bit higher just because they're less expensive, but honestly, I would just tell you to not get either one of these. The problem, the, the one cool thing about this one is that it does come out clear, so there was like no white cast whatsoever. Um, and maybe at first it felt okay, but this was like one or two hours into the day, um, 
my hair looked awful and like I hadn't done anything to it at all. So that was really problematic for me. Um, so yeah, it might have felt good at first, but you know, it's got to last more than an hour. So I guess unless the only thing you're doing is running to Walmart, I would avoid those. This next one I actually went through too because before I had found a really great dry shampoo, I liked to add a little bit of volumizer into my hair. So this is actually labeled as a dry shampoo. It is the 24 karat Sally Hirschberger Supreme Stylist Vol Voluminous Dry Shampoo. That's what it's called. However, it is an absolutely terrible dry shampoo. I think this is a case of mislabeling. Um, terrible dry shampoo. It did nothing of that sort for me, but it was a really nice volumizer. Thing is, is I don't really need products like this anymore. As you can see, I actually did repurchase it. Um, I just don't need a product like this anymore now that I've actually found a dry shampoo that doesn't need that extra step. So I did like this. Um, as a volumizer, but I don't need it. So, okay, so this next one is the Tresemme Fresh Start, and I really liked this one for a long time. And then I went and bought a new batch of it, and I think that they changed the formula. That's the only thing that I can understand. Like I was using it, I finished up one, then I went and bought a new one, and I used it, and it wasn't any good. So I, <laughs> I don't know if I just changed that drastically, like overnight, or if they changed the formula. Um, it really could be either. I don't know. So. At the price point, this one's mediocre. Um, it's not terrible. If you're interested in, you know, trying it, I, I wouldn't say definitely don't ever try this. It's awful, but you know, it's just very, very mediocre. And also, I have a couple other ones in here that at drugstore price point that I like better. So I would hold off and try those first. So this one is from Kenra, and this is the Volume Dry Shampoo. And there's quite a bit of product left in here because I just got tired of testing it. It wasn't the worst dry shampoo that I used. Um, it was pretty good. Or, it, no, let's not say it was pretty good. Let's just say it was me pretty mediocre. Um, it's really cool because it does come out completely clear. So there's no white cast. You don't have to worry about a white cast with this one. However, just after a couple hours, I just wasn't really digging it. And I was like, you know what? My hair looks better with my other products and I would rather use the products that I love. So, I mean, considering this is a $17 dry shampoo, um, if you're interested in it, I would get the sample size first just because it was very, very mediocre. And yeah, I didn't like it. So the next, like, four products I have are all kind of lumped together. Um, one, two, three of them are drugstore and one of them is um, higher end. So I have my notes here. Um, one of them I forgot to actually make notes about. So I'm just going to go ahead and get it out of the way first. This is the Not Your Mother's Clean Freak. Um, I feel very, I felt like this one was okay. Once again, I should have grouped it in with like maybe the Kenra dry shampoo. Once again, I just felt like this one didn't stick with me very long. It la it worked for a little while and it was good for a minute and then a couple hours in I was just like, eh, this just isn't doing it. So the price point is good on this, especially if you buy one of these little ones. So if you are interested in trying it, I would say get one of these little travel size bottles and give it a try because I know a lot of people do kind of like that one at the drugstore price point. The ones I'm talking about now are kind of like products that I think that if you try you'll kind of at least like enough to get through them unless you already have a favorite then maybe you'll feel differently but if you're just kind of still wandering around like I don't know I don't really love any of these I don't hate any of these um I think that most of these are pretty be decently safe bets. Somehow in life, I forgot to keep the Suave dry shampoo container, but I managed to keep three Batiste dry shampoo containers. So as you can see, at one point, I did really, really like Batiste. What I really liked about Batiste, to be honest, was that it was inexpensive. So I had found a, a good dry shampoo that I liked, but it was a little bit more expensive than I wanted to spend. So on days when I was maybe just putting my hair up or, you know, not not really needing the best hair look for me, I would reach for the Batiste. I, I, I'm going to read my notes here because I'm comparing the Batiste and the Suave 
very directly and I felt like that there were pros and cons of each but they were different so if you don't really love Batiste maybe you try it. but you're looking for something at drugstore prices maybe try the Suave if you don't really like the Suave try the Batiste I think that the Suave left less of a white cast Batiste did better at getting the oily feeling out both were pretty good for restyling my hair but I don't like that the Batiste leaves like this weird silky powdery feeling in my hair I just I don't like it um, the price point went to Suave, and I could keep going back and forth. I felt like if I didn't like one thing about Batiste, the Suave did it better. Um, so, either way, I feel like both of those are pretty safe bets for people to try. I know people really, really like Batiste. I, I don't personally want to repurchase it anymore, but in a pinch, I would pick it up. I would pick up the Suave, too. Um, it's like if I were out of town and forgot mine or something to that nature. And then the other one I have is this Amika dry shampoo. And I this is, I had more of these. I used more of these. Um, I actually thought this one was pretty good. However, I felt like it was a lot like the Batiste. So the things I didn't like about Batiste, I don't like about this one. You know, it had an issue with the white cast. One of the things I really didn't like about this one is it had a really strong perfumey scent. And the other thing I didn't really care, it was so much like the Batiste. However, the price point is like twice as much. Yeah, this is 20, the Amika dry shampoo is $25, the Batiste is eight. So it's almost three times as much and you can get the Batiste on sale a lot. So yeah, that, I don't know. Um, the one thing that I will say in favor of the Amika is that I'm pretty certain the Amika is um, cruelty free. I don't know if it's anything else, but I'm pretty certain that this one is cruelty free. However, I was looking up Batiste earlier and the information was somewhat conflicting. Um, I don't know, but it sounds like Batiste is not cruelty free. So I do not know if that's absolute fact. Like I said, sometimes things get confusing. Um, so if you do know, let me know. Don't argue about it because like I said, it's confusing and it's okay that we don't know 100% of everything all the time. Um, <laughs> anyways, so there we go. I like all three of those. However, we're about to get into my favorites and I'm really excited about that. So basically I have the whole Chlorun. I don't know how to say this properly, so I'm sorry. Chlorun, Chlorine, Chlorine, Chloron line. I have it in the regular white um, shampoo. Let's see. Dry shampoo with oat milk. Um, dry shampoo with oat milk in brown. I have this dry shampoo with oat milk powder. I have detox dry bar shampoo. Sorry, this isn't chlorine. And I have another, um, I have misplaced the bottle again, but I also have the Bumble and Bumble, um, Pret, Pret, powder, the, the powder shampoo dry shampoo we're talking about dry shampoo let me go ahead and get the bumble and bumble out of the way i do really like the bumble and bumble the powder the shaky powder um it is the most expensive product that i'll talk about all day it's 14 dollars an ounce however because it's a powder that really kind of skews things a little bit the powders last a lot longer than the sprays so i do have this chloron um, powder maybe I'll get this one out of the way too I do have this one as well and it lasts me forever so although this is a $20 dry shampoo it lasts me probably four or five six or more times longer than the sprays so I, this is the second highest price product in the thing um, in this group of products and you know once again the value is just so much better so I really really th this is my favorite the shaky powders are my favorite and I prefer this one over the bumble and bumble because this one is silicone free um, and also it's you know it's a little bit cheaper so um, I like the bumble and bumble I think if you haven't tried that one and you're interested in that brand and you like their products go ahead and try it but I, I really recommend this the other cool thing about the Chloron brand is that um, you can find these now at Ulta on hot buys occasionally and I do see these going on promotion in other places randomly so keep your eye out because if you can get these for ten dollars and it lasts like six months um, seven months like that's 
a great, great, great value for a really nice product. One of the things I did want to mention in this video is how I actually apply my dry shampoo. And I have a pretty, I wouldn't say rigid schedule, but it it can, it's open to change, but I typically kind of just do the same thing over and over again, which is day one is freshly washed hair. Day two, I um, have dry shampoo in my hair. And day three, I have dry shampoo in my hair and I wear it up. So that's about, that's my hair washing schedule. Then day four obviously becomes day one because I wash my hair again. So what I do is at the end of day one, which today's a day one, tonight before I go to bed, I will go ahead and put all the dry shampoo in my hair that I want. So that way, if the dry shampoo does leave a little bit of a white cast, it has all night to kind of work its magic, keep the oil at bay, and then in the morning I can just definitely run my hands through it and get out the rest of the white cast. So that is my tip for because I, I, mean, I will be honest with you this does leave a little bit of a white cast um, you have to really blend it now you're able to blend this out really really well but you know it takes a minute so to save myself time in the morning and effort I just do it at night anyway so this is my favorite this is what I recommend um, this is what I use almost every day or every day that I use dry shampoo okay however 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 we have, I bought this one just in case because some mornings I might want a little more in my hair and I just really wanted to try it. And this is the dry shampoo with oat milk, but this is the one that has for brown to dark brown hair. Um, these are basically the same. The dry shampoo with oat milk, these are basically the same formula. Um, I didn't really, I haven't noticed any differences between them. So... I would say if you have dark hair, get this one. If you don't, get just get the regular. But this one doesn't isn't really all that dark. It's definitely not quite as dark as my natural hair. So you're not going to be completely free of white cast or, you know, being able to see it in your hair. So, so just so you know, I mean, it really is like more of that color, which as you can see, I mean, it's not even like, not even close. However, it is a little bit better than just plain white. The next one I have is actually a repurchase, um, and I just bought it to mix it up a little bit. I do really like the product. It is one of my favorite. It's just as good as the Chloron. Um, the thing that I think makes the Chloron a little bit better is that you can get it on sale. I've never seen this one on sale, which does, doesn't necessarily mean it never goes on sale. I've just never seen it. So this is the Detox Dry Shampoo from Dry Bar. I think this one is really, really good as well. Um, both of these do, let's see how I, let's see my notes on here. See, this one does leave a white cast, but it removes the oily feel, it removes the oily feeling. I have no issues restyling my hair. It doesn't leave any weird textures or residues. So basically the only points that I took off of this guy was um, for price point and what was the other thing uh for price point and white cast so it does leave a little bit of a white cast which i said you can still shake it out um and the price point's high i don't know for certain that i looked up whether it was like um socially conscious that's what i call like vegan cruelty free all of those things so i don't know that i looked that up but i think i did so i'm guessing yeah it looks like there's a bunny on here so i'm guessing that that's socially conscious brand and same with the Chlorine. You know, I don't know if I looked this one up either, but most European brands are, aren't they? I really don't know the answer. I just always kind of assumed, but I don't know that I actually looked up whether the Chlorine was cruelty-free or not. So that would be interesting to know. Let me know down below if you know. Um, but the things that I took off for the Chlorine were white cast and once again price point. So there you go. I think they're great. I think they're great products. Um, those are the ones that I recommend that you try. Look for them on Hot Buys. Um, and yeah, that's my video for today. And I know this video is really, really long. And I hope that you enjoyed it. If you have any other questions, um, let me know down below if I can remember details about specific things that you might like to know. Um, let me know and I will try my best to answer your question. And I'll see you guys again soon. Bye!